My palms started sweating as I stood with the other kids. It was almost my turn to recite the days of the week, and yet I did not know a single one. Quickly, I tried to memorize the sounds I heard the other children make. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. How was I to memorize all of this? When my turn came, I just stood there, a five-year-old, wide-eyed, waiting for a miracle. I was never a shy child, quite the opposite, actually. Yet, moving from Latvia to Miami was quite a shock for a little French boy like me. The only four English words I knew were yes, no, maybe, hello. If I didn't understand what someone was saying, I would just run away. <laughs> Deeply ashamed and frustrated, I felt like everyone in the class was silently laughing at me, laughing that I could not speak the same language as them. I wanted to understand people, I really did, and I wanted to be understood. The blabbermouth I was at home would shut up as I came to school. I would zip my sweater as I came into the school, and with it, I would zip my mouth. The big kids intimidated me, and my jacket acted as my shield. It protected me from them, from the school, from this new unfamiliar place called America. <laughs> so I insisted on keeping this shield, this jacket, wherever I went, even if it meant boiling to death in this 30 degrees Celsius temperature. Not only was I afraid of the big kids, but I was also afraid of chapter books. When my mom suggested we try and read A to Z Mysteries, The Goose is Gold, I started bawling. I was crying. I really wanted to read a chapter book. I really did. But I put so much pressure on myself that the fear of failure loomed over me. The 11 whole chapters I had to read seemed nothing in comparison to the little books I had to read in kindergarten. But just as I had learned the days of the week in steps, and I had learned more and more words in English, I opened the book in my bubble bath. And even though I'm pretty sure my mom read two-thirds of the book for me, when I finished, I started crying. I wasn't crying because I had soap in my eye from the bubble bath, or because I was scared, but because I had read a book, a real American chapter book. And now why this anecdote? Why tell you something that happened 12 school years ago? Why should this matter? Well, the reason I wanted to share this story with you was to demonstrate how I was forced to step out of my comfort zone when I was a small child. Except being forced to do so was probably the most beneficial for me in terms of my development and growth. Although this seems like a simple, naive childhood incident, overcoming my fear of chapter books helped shape my personality and who I am today. As I learned English, I became more enthusiastic, passionate, outgoing. It's funny how overcoming our fears can make us different people, and that's really the point of my speech today, to cross the line and to find a passion that will help you cross that line as well. As I was forced to step out of my comfort zone, I started reading more books, and I became a voracious reader. As time went on, I first started reading Goosebumps, Magic Treehouse series, and then I went on to harder and harder books, and I also found play scripts. After reading the play scripts, I noticed that the voices I made, hello, hello, the voices I made for the characters in my books, I could incorporate that with my other passion, the theater. The theater had been instilled in me ever since I was a small child by my parents when we lived in Latvia. We would go to the circus, puppet shows, movie, theater, ballet, opera, at least two times a month, if not more. I, my favorite moment was when the red curtains would part to reveal a new world, a new world which I wanted to be part of. The theater slowly became my passion. It was not something I begrudgingly agreed to do or begrudgingly approached. I wanted to go. I would put on my little polo and go sit in the car and wait for an hour while my mom would get ready. When I moved to Russia from Miami, I finally summoned the courage to go and try acting in a full-scale show. I had been in little skits ever since pre-K, where I would usually receive the larger roles. But being part of this new experience, being in a show, was just so gratifying. Painting the set, memorizing lines, working with other individuals, and that's what really struck me about the theater. Above all, what I enjoy, and still enjoy, the, what I enjoy the most about acting is the pleasure and the joy that you can bring to others. I found that not only do I experience joy from acting, but I can bring happiness to audience members watching. It's funny how the theater can bring us all together. People are willing to just sit in a room for hours 
no matter what their race, gender, religion, political opinion, sexuality, everyone is just willing to sit in the theater and listen to the story that's being told on stage. Our ability thus makes us imagine, uh, imaginers, explorers, inventors, and creators. But how did I discover this? How did I discover that everyone wants to be in the theater and wants to watch uh, individuals on stage pour their heart out? You guessed it. I was forced to step out of my car. Nothing more than so much so week. as to say. Except at first I was quite nervous. It was a very stressful experience and I wasn't sure if I could do it. No student had ever directed a musical on this stage or in this school ever before. And so some of the teachers were not as inclined and didn't think that I could do it. At times, I thought I couldn't do it as well. How could I direct 25 kids? How could I be in charge of the lights, the props, sets? But I was able to surround myself with people who had these skills and these abilities. In order to step outside our comfort zones, we have to find people who are willing to help us and who will help us reach and go over that line. And in the end, the production was truly spectacular because of all our group efforts. The, when the little children came, when the parents came, everyone was so happy, clapping, laughing, dancing in the aisles of the theater. Speaking, however, I wasn't comfortable with this at first, but I did become comfortable. And speaking of not being comfortable, how many of you saw the Rocky Horror Picture Show? Yes, the Rocky Horror Picture Show is quite a risque uh, play that we did at school. And a lot of the actors had to step outside their comfort zones. And in terms of being an actor, this is what you want to do. In order to be believable, truthful on stage, you want to step out of your comfort zone and just look weird, just do weird things. And that's why I always try out for the plays. Even if a play doesn't really necessarily attract me at first, I always find some value in it. I have been in an opera, in musicals, in regular plays, in a dinner theater experience, and now just in the Rocky Horror Picture Show. And speaking of the Rocky Horror Picture Show, Leo did a fantastic job as Dr. Frankenfurter. And there is no doubt that he is so talented. Yet what really made him shine was that he was able to step outside of his comfort zone. I don't think it's normal for Leo to wear nail polish, makeup, high heels, and a corset on a regular basis. Yet he did it for his role as an actor. And by doing so, he was able to transgress and to go above the boundaries and the stereotypes that we have. It's for a boy, a senior boy, to put on fishnet tights, short bike shorts, and also high heels. It's something that we don't see every day, but he did it. And in the end, it was very funny and a very good experience. And that's what I found out that when you do theater, when you look at the arts, you don't necessarily have to enjoy them. You just have to see some value in it. I used to hate postmodernism. I thought that it was just an excuse for people to roll around on stage wearing black unitards, just thrashing on the floor. <laughs> but however, I went to see a production called Tabac Rouge during the Chekhov Festival here in Moscow. And I actually discovered some value in postmodernism. And in IB Theater Arts, we started studying it. And I went on to write my whole extended essay on postmodernism, which I would never have thought. As Natalia, one of our very artistic seniors here, told me, she always tries to go see art that she may not like. She said that she hates uh, Kandinsky, right? Am I right? She hates Kandinsky. However, she went to the museum, she looked at the piece, and she actually found one that she enjoyed. You don't have to like the art that you see. You just have to find some value in it. Also, I've realized that the arts and the theater are not only about delivering the highest level of artistic performance possible, but it's also about being a citizen. Whether it's my involvement in the Gender Equality Club, or a tutor for the National Honor Society, or even for Movember and Peer Helper Awareness, I found that I can use my skills as an actor in my community to help and to help bring about these negative stereotypes that we have for people and to help try and break them. To give an example, I teach English at a school for visually impaired Russian children here in Moscow. These children are often ostracized because of their handicaps. As we know, in Russia, people with disabilities aren't often seen in the most positive light. 
except I go to their school and I teach English in a fun way. I don't teach in the old-fashioned textbook kind of way with uh, books or grammar books. No, I teach through theater, songs, performances we all devise. And hopefully this helps them learn English in a creative way, release their creativity, and really release themselves from the stigmas of Russian society that ostracizes them. Also, additionally, I've been to around the world, as many of you have, and we should acknowledge our privilege in this regard. We have the ability to, uh, to, in, uh, to influence, to impact, and also to get the influence from other cultures. We, I saw tribal stories acted out in Tanzania, water puppet shows in Hanoi, Broadway in New York City, um, the Moscow Ballet here in Russia, and I realized how the theater has the ability to bring everyone together. And that's why I want to become a powerful advocate for human rights in the future through the medium of acting. It's quite easy to forget that actors are very important parts of society, as was mentioned in the second video. They're, the actions of these actors directly influence everyone that is around, because being human is an art form. We constantly wear masks from the world that is around us. We don't want to show ourselves as weak or vulnerable. Boys are usually not seen as being able to cry or women have to put on a certain charm to be liked. However, as a stage actor, I have realized that whatever that you can help people connect, if you're a little bit dramatic, flashy, if you stand out from the others, from the crowd, then people are more inclined to come to you and also stand out from the crowd. And this is why I always wear clothes like this, why I'm always super energetic, why I'm friendly and I reach out to people people, because people want to break free from this mask, and if you give them the opportunity, then they will. Through your mask, people will let theirs go. So I encourage all of you to wear bright colors, to laugh loudly, to talk loudly, to be ready and willing to stand up for the people who do not have a voice. Thank you.